I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Presidential politics. Newt Gingrich's staff walks out. Gone. Mitt Romney announces he will not contest straw polls in Iowa, in Florida, in Michigan. The presidential contest is underway, and the dropouts and the unemployed among the GOP ranks now rival the national averages. I welcome Thaddeus McCotter, who is oft mentioned as a presidential contender this year of 2011 for the Republican contest. Within these last hours, Mr. McCotter, who represents 11th Michigan, that's Livonia, attended an event at E&E Manufacturing, that's a parts supplier, the guts of the American motor manufacturing industry in Plymouth, Michigan, in his district. E&E Manufacturing is owned by Wes Smith. Mr. McCotter, Thaddeus, a very good evening to you. Your event was uh, presented as a harsh welcome to Mitt Romney, who is the son of a former governor of Michigan, who is a former governor of Massachusetts, who was coming to your town, to your district, within these last hours to talk about his presidential campaign. Good evening, Congressman, and what was your harsh welcome for the governor? Well, John, it was reported that he was coming to my district for about a good half hour to send a message to me. So in the interest of Motor City hospitality, we wanted to kindly give him a response, let him hear from some of the people who his principles and policies that resulted from would have had a detrimental impact in a very recessed economy. And your response to the governor spoke of his uh, lack of attention to the troubles in Michigan these last years. Very specifically, he wrote a now infamous article saying, let Detroit go bankrupt. That was during the Bush administration. Now, after two and a half years of the Obama administration, what has Governor Romney said about the turnaround in the car industry and about the, the, the prospects of the troubled people of Michigan? Well, first, John, as you know, there's, there were three major things that we pointed out that were not helpful to Michigan, and the fourth you've just mentioned that we can go into. But the first was he supported the Wall Street bailout, which has failed. It has not done what it said it was going to do. And so did President Obama. When you look at it, they both believe in climate change as the basis of cap and trade. Governor Romney took steps as governor of Massachusetts on it, and the only time he refrained, he said it didn't control, include price controls in the Northeast Compact. Same as President Obama. And when you look at Romney Care and Obamacare, both are based on the concept of comparative effectiveness which is the term for rationing, that the government bureaucrats decide whether or not your treatment uh, is worth their investment, all of which are unhelpful to our economy, all of which are unhelpful to people in Michigan and America. As to the auto loan, Mr. Romney did is what so many Republicans who supported the Wall Street bailout did, is they missed what the issue was. As you know, John, the Wall Street bailout was passed despite the most vociferous opposition of people like myself. But once that money was taken from Main Street and stuck on Wall Street, you had a choice. You could leave the $700 billion on Wall Street, or you could take some of it and try to save manufacturing and jobs on Main Street and save the taxpayers $300 billion, according to Moody's, in social safety net spending. So when you decide that you did not want to help the auto industry, it wasn't that you were against bailouts. You were leaving every single dime of Main Street's money in the hands of the people who crashed the economy on Wall Street. And that's the painful reality that a lot of them like to skip over. Do I connect these events properly, Thaddeus, if I say that Mr. Romney supported the bailout for his friends, the bankers, but turned his back and walked away from the people of Michigan? Is that accurate? Well, John, I'm certainly not going to contest it. All I can do is say that my father's statement rings true today. You never forget where you came from or you'll forget anything. Let's talk about Mr. Romney's statement on the climate. Uh, this is a, a sleeper issue in the Republican contest, but he's made statements that make him indistinguishable from the President of the United States and some of the most progressive elements in the Democratic Party. Has he provided an explanation to the people of Michigan what those statements would mean for their prospects? Uh, no, but we know where they lead. They lead to cap and trade. They lead to the belief that somehow the government bureaucrats are going to start controlling the weather by controlling industry and private property. And so when you start to see it again, John, this is why I think that the statement rings true. When the people of Michigan who are struggling to try to get government out of the way to rebuild their economy have sound opportunities to prosper and pursue their dreams, when they look at the presidential race and they see President Obama and they see former Governor Romney, they do not see rivals, they see running men. Mr. Romney's uh, Romney Care in Massachusetts and Mr. Obama's Obamacare 
that is much contested by the Republican Party. Did Mr. Romney provide an explanation to the people of Livonia, your district, uh, why he uh, pushed through a mandate in Massachusetts that is now a mandate in the United States and why he's not responsible for that? Well, his argument is federalism. But the reality is, John, it's the principles beneath the policies, the principles of climate change that he has bought into, the principles of the Wall Street bailout that he bought into, too big to fail, the principles that he bought into of comparative effectiveness research. It's not a question of whether or not the state should do a bad thing or whether the federal government should do a bad thing. Personally, most of us think they shouldn't do a bad thing at either level. But what he's shown is that the principles on which he has based his policy which are detrimental to the economy, detrimental to the pursuit of happiness by the American people, are there. And so he will take those principles into the White House. Now, if he says that he no longer believes in them, you have to wonder what principles he's come up with today. The announcement late in the day, and I'm speaking to Thaddeus McCotter, who represents Livonia, and Mr. Romney, the leading presidential candidate, we're told on the basis of his ability to raise money from the Republican Party, chose to go to Mr. McCotter's district today. And so it was fair for Mr. McCotter to respond in his district and now to continue this conversation. Uh, Thaddeus, the late news that Mr. Romney will not contest the straw poll in Iowa, the straw poll in Florida, the straw poll in Michigan. Is Mr. Romney frightened of the people of Michigan and in this beauty contest? Is he fearful of their judgment? I don't want to speculate on why a campaign does or doesn't do things. I just knew that I do know, John, that it's typical for someone who gets in late or someone who is not running with all the money that you talked about. Uh, to be less willing to try to go through the beauty contest because it takes a lot of time and money. But if you're talking about people who've had organizations in place and have been perceived as a front runner since essentially the end of the 2008 election for the Republican Party, uh, it does lead one to wonder why not. If you are a front runner and you have, have, you have the money and you have the organization, what is the reason? And I'm sure that he'll be asked that question and be given a chance to answer it for himself. Mr. Romney does a lot of explaining, Thaddeus. Did he explain his candidacy to the people of Livonia today in a convincing fashion, or did he just show up to play trash-talking games to you? Well, I think he showed up in my district, as it was reported, to send me a message. I think it was more important for Michigan to send me a message. I think that they did. I think that the people who were at the diner that were not pleased uh, with his position on letting Detroit go bankrupt and were not pleased with his explanation. And one of the things that I think they found frustrating, John, is when you talk about his explanation, he says that the bankruptcy he advocated would be pretty much similar to the one that President Obama put Detroit through. The reality is he leaves out the fact that President Obama's radical restructuring of the auto industry included the TARP loan that originated under President Bush. When Mr. Romney talked about bankruptcy being good for you, there was no loan involved in that process. And I think that that's a key distinction. I know it's one that is not lost upon the people uh, who work in the auto industry. Mr. Romney says that he wants to present himself as a businessman who can help America's struggling economy. Uh, Noblesse oblige, it was called once upon a time. There's a sense of entitlement and elitism about the Romney campaign. Does that sit well with the people of Michigan? Do they forgive him all that because he's the son of a governor? Uh, No, I think that the reality is, Sean, is when you look at the record, you could be a businessman and make bad political decisions and decisions that are injurious to the interests of business and to growing our economy and to get a job growth going here again, to break through the stagnant wage cycle that we seem to be in. So when you start to talk about the Wall Street bailout, when you talk about climate change, when you talk about the position on Romney Care and comparative effectiveness research, whether you're a businessman or whether you're not, the reality is those policies and principles are injurious to job creation and economic growth in the United States. So to me, it doesn't matter what your background is, it's what you're advocating and what you've done. And those are painful, painful positions to try to advocate or to be in the interest of growing this economy. I'm looking at Mr. Romney as a potential candidate for the Republican Party, my father's, my grandfather's Republican Party. And the puzzle to me is how he's distinguishing himself from the President of the United States. So I ask this very cynical question. Is he the man Mr. Obama wants to run against? Is that what's going on here? These two uh, share a lot of policies. That would make the President a presumptive leader in this contest. I think that as someone who comes from the Republican Party, John, that you can feel the disappointment that so many do. You have 54 percent, according to the polls, that are not satisfied with the Republican field. That's compared to 68 percent that were satisfied back in 2008 at the same time when it was simply Mr. Romney and Mr. McCain. What you're seeing now is President Obama running against the economy. You see a group of Republicans that hope the economy stays bad so that they may have a chance to beat him. And to me, that's not what the Republican Party is about. 
The Republican Party is about allowing the American people to grow the economy, to continue to build on the most prosperous and equitable economy known in human history. It's about securing the country from our enemies abroad. That's an issue we haven't even touched upon, where you see the entire Republican field not knowing much about what's going on in the rest of the world, let alone talking about it or confining it with the problems that it poses for our economy. So if someone who understands the Republican Party from Lincoln to Reagan, or is like yourself who wrote a book called Ain't You Glad to Join the Republican Party, what you're seeing here are people who are trying to win if their opponent loses. And that is not what the Republican electorate wants. That is not what America needs. Thaddeus Makata representing the people of Livonia. That's Western Detroit, 11th Michigan. Mitt Romney, the leading contender for the Republican nomination, traveled to Livonia today and did not answer important questions. Mitt Romney, you want to be president of the United States. You pay a lot of attention to yourself. How about paying attention to the people of the United States of America? We're in trouble, we want to grow, and we need protection. Meanwhile, you duck the straw polls. I'm John.